it looks like we have Sandy in here is experiencing a little technical difficulty so uh, let's give it a couple more minutes Made it, sorry. <laughs> no problem. I'm in now, Shane. Okay, looks like all the members of the council are here as well as the clerk, treasurer, and the mayor. It is 5.03 p.m. I will call this meeting of the Common Council to order. Um, because this is an electronic meeting, all votes, we're going to have to do roll call style votes. Um, Clerk Treasurer Aldrich, would you like to go ahead and do roll call for this meeting? Sure. Um, Sandy Fora. Here. Gail Connor. Gail Connor. I think that was it here. Mike Isley. Here. Spencer Kingry. Here. Cody Nelson. Here. Gil, could you say something just to test that we can hear you? I'm not sure if Gail can hear us right now or not. Well, I thought I heard a partial sound from her when I called it the second time, but well, we're talking about her and she doesn't seem to know. So give me just a second, I'm gonna give her a call. Okay. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I think you're on. Can you hear me now, Gail? Nothing now. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear Gail. I 
can hear you. I can't. I, I would rather be able to hear everybody while everybody's talking. Yeah. I don't want to sit and hold the phone for the next four hours. <laughs> you don't need to log out and get back in. Try that. I heard her there. Yeah, I can hear her playing. I don't think she can hear us though. Oh, she's gonna log back off and or log off and log back in. We'll give it just a little bit longer. So we can hear you. Uh, okay. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you through the computer, but um, I'm not hearing anything from my computer. Yeah. Is your volume turn all the way up? Yeah. And you still can't hear anything from us? something now on the phone. It just popped in and it came on. It just popped in and it came on. Sorry, I had myself muted. <laughs> Are we good now? <laughs> All right. Um, so since Gail couldn't hear us during roll call, we got the four others. Gail Connor, are you present? Um, if you could, if, while you're not speaking, try to mute yourself, um, whether through your phone or on the app, just so we don't get uh, the feedback. Um, the first item of business that we have is the selection of a council member to serve as acting mayor um, until the vacancy is filled. Um, I know we haven't had much of a discussion on this yet, and I don't know if you guys know who all is interested. Um, so I'd like to just go through the list of city council members, say if you're interested, then we can move on to the nomination um, part of the meeting. So uh, President Pritch and Connor, I know you expressed at the last meeting you weren't interested. Has that changed at all since the last meeting? I'm not interested. All right. Um, I'm someone with Flora. I did talk to my, my supervisors, and as long as it's for a short period of time, I would be willing to to help out. All right, thank you. Councilman Ivesley? If needed, I would, yes, if there's no one else. Councilman Kingery? If needed, I would. 
Councilman Nelson? Uh, no. Sorry, what was that, sir? I would not. I would not be able to fill in. Okay. Um, I guess between uh, Councilwoman Four, Councilman Isley, and Councilman Kingery, is there any one of you that wants it more than the rest or thinks you're more qualified for it than the rest? Sounds like everybody is just willing to fill in if need be. Yes, I heard that Spencer was interested, and I would I would vote for Spencer to fill in if he would be willing to do that. I think he would be okay with that. All right, Sandy, any hard feelings if we were to go that way? Not at all. Spencer, hard feelings just from you? No. <laughs> all right. So let's move to nominations. We have nominations for the selection of a council member to serve as acting mayor in the event of a vacancy. I move that Spencer Kingery become the interim mayor in the event of a vacancy. All right, we've got a nomination um, from Gail Connor. Do we have any other nominations to serve as acting mayor in the event of a vacancy? No. All right. Uh, hearing none, I will call the question via roll call um, as to um, selecting Spencer Kingery as uh, the acting mayor in the event of a vacancy. Gail Connor. Aye. Sandy Flora. Aye. Mike Isley. Aye. Spencer Kingery. Aye. Cody Nelson. All right, we have a unanimous vote of the council that if there is a vacancy in the office of the mayor um, between uh, appointing uh, replacement and my resignation, that Spencer Kingery will be acting mayor. Congratulations, Mr. Kingery. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. Yep. All right, we will move next uh, to the budget workshop portion of the meeting. So all of you should have a hard copy of the budget at your house um, or with you, wherever you are. Um, so we're going to go through this and we're just going to try to go in order. We do have some department heads on the line if you do have any questions for them. Um, um, I guess from a broad perspective, uh, this is the initial budget proposal. Uh, this is a starting point. The purpose of this budget workshop is to get your feedback and try to make it smooth sailing from here on out. Um, initially, the executive branch submits the budget proposal to Gateway, and then after that point, the city council has meetings on the ordinance, and during one of those meetings, they have a budget hearing where the public is entitled to speak um, to the city budget. Um, <laughs> I have an explanation of um, total amounts that are, have been initially proposed um, because of coronavirus we know that revenue may be more volatile in 2021 than what it has been in past years I believe we are using conservative estimates in this to ensure that um, if we're trying to be in the black we're going to end up at that point if we know we're going to be a little bit in the red for next year um, at least we know that going in and hopefully um, we end up better than what we even projected with the conservative estimates. I've provided from the uh, Accelerate Indiana Municipalities um, budget bulletin. So they have some dates uh, regarding when we have to get everything passed. Um, we do have to have the budget passed by November 1st or else the city keeps the same budget that we had from 2020. The wages ordinance is in here. Um, it, it also must be passed. Well, sorry, wages and salaries ordinance has to be passed by November 1st. Um, the budget itself has to be submitted to Gateway by November 4th. The process is outlined from the budget bulletin. Um, essentially, the department heads or the fiscal officer um, prepares a budget estimate. Um, 
city fiscal officer, which we clerk treasurer Aldridge provides an estimate of revenues available for the budget year and estimate of other expenditures not covered by department budgets. Uh, I meet with Leanne and the department heads by the estimate. Um, and then we submit it to the city council. In order to ensure that we meet the November deadline for the budgets, I proposed, um, that the first reading of the budget would happen at our first meeting in September falls on uh, the second Tuesday, actually, because uh, September 7th is Labor Day. Our second reading of the budget and the public hearing on the budget would occur on the third Monday of the month, which would be September 21st. And the final third and final reading of the budget would occur on October 5th. These dates can be changed around. Um, I try to get it done by the end, by the beginning of October, just to ensure we have time to load it in the gateway. Um, if there are any changes to the budget, um, but it can be adjusted if the council and the incoming mayor so desire. It is important to note that after I submit the budget, well, I me, mean, after the succeeding mayor uh, submits the budget to gateway that the council cannot increase um, line items at that time. Uh, so it's important that tonight, if there's anything that you believe is lower than it needs to be, that we get that um, explained tonight so that we still have the opportunity to put it in the budget uh, when it's submitted to Gateway. I tried for most funds um, to put together the estimated revenue. Um, some of it, I, I mirrored um, what the Department of Local Government Finance has. However, it's, it's difficult when, especially for the general fund, when we get into property taxes and income tax. Um, their estimates, they said they're using 90% um, for their estimates of revenue. That's what they typically use uh, when putting together our estimated revenue for the purposes of um, general fund budget estimates, I did 80% just to be on the safe side and have a conservative number. Uh, on property taxes, I put about 85% of what we used in 2019. And then uh, for most of the other income sources, uh, I was based off of the average of 2017 to 2019. Um, the average of 2019 in some instances where that was recommended by DLGF. Uh, the um, total estimated revenue that I came up with, and this is conservatively, is a little over $2.2 .2 million for 2021. Uh, that's assuming that coronavirus has the impact that it has in terms of income taxes and property taxes specifically. Taking that into account, we've also averaged just about $266,000 um, in revenue over expenses out of the general fund um, between 2016 and 2019. So I added that $266,000 uh, that we have turned back into the general fund on average during those four years uh, to come up with a target number of $2.477 million. That number if everything else stays the same, um, if we had a budget of that amount, we would break even in 2021. Um, now that's using conservative numbers, but we also don't know, you know what the economy is going to do in the next couple months. Hopefully we stay strong, but you don't know. Um, so that's kind of the target number that when I was formulating the budget that I was going for, that 2.477 million. I also tried to put together the estimated general funds at the end of the year. Um, so I show we started with 4.6, we had 336,000 encumbrances, additional appropriation of 110 for sidewalks, um, and then subtract what our budget is for this year, add what our expected revenue was for this year, and you come up with the uh, 4.5 million just shy of. Normally I'm off um, in putting this number together for the budget, but normally I'm on the lower side rather than the higher side we do have a healthy reserve in the general fund if we did so intend to go into the red next year. Through this point, are there any questions from the council? No. So 
so we'll start moving into line items. Uh, I guess before we start that, in terms of salaries and wages, I, in kind of the discussions we've had prior to coronavirus hitting, um, I went with a 5% recommended increase in wages across the board. Um, I know there was discussion possibly about a larger increase. However, to keep with that $2.477 million, 5% was about as feasible of an increase that I, that I could see. Um, so council salaries are going up $986. That's a 5% increase from where you're at now. Health insurance, we're pretty healthy in terms of what that budget is. We should be comfortable uh, keeping it at that $275,000 next year. FICA Med increased just shy of $3,000. That's due to the 5% increase. The FICA and Med that the city pays is based off a percentage of wages from our employees. So if we raise 5%, yeah. it's FICA Med 5%. Yeah. Can we have a discussion on the 5% salary increase before we get too far into the? That would be just fine. President Pro Tem Connor, what do you have? Um, before we get too far down the road, and uh, I wanted to share a few things with the council about our obligations and our duties this evening. Um, I wanted to find out, first of all, have all four of you had a chance to look over the budget in depth, Senator? Yes, I did. Good. Okay. Cody, have you had a chance to look over it in depth? Sandy? Am I? No, I've looked at it. I've looked at it. All right, I wanted to also share that the amount of money we wind up appropriating tonight for the 2021 budget is going to have a direct impact on the tax levy, both on the citizens. And I want that to be foremost in your mind as we go through this. That the decisions we make this evening are going to affect the tax rate and affect the tax payers. They're currently carrying a debt load of $23 million. There is quite a significant amount of money in cash reserve. And in the past couple of years, the community has had to stand a great increases on water. So as we go through this tonight, I want to keep in mind, secondly, that our job is to be fiscally responsible with the tax And to start off, I'd like to ask what your thoughts are and have an open conversation about the percentage increase of wages. And salaries because last year was two percent, and by going with two percent last year, that did not cause an increase in FICA or PER. And I believe that from the research I've done, the cost of living adjustment for the coming year is going to be around three percent. So with that information shared, I'd like to hear from the council what your thoughts are on the percent increase of rate of wages and salaries that you think is fair to the department heads, the employees, and also to the actors. I think it's unfair to give them a two or three percent increase because that basically is a slap in the face as a raise. I'm, I've had three percent increase. Andy, Mike, Cody, anything? Yes. No. What's that? I was saying that a two or three percent increase is a slap in the face because um, that's like a quarter an hour. I've got a three percent increase and that's not enough. If you want to keep good help, we're going to have to pay for it. And yes, we are all taxpayers. We are all paying taxes. A five percent increase, I think, would be good because that's showing the people that work for our city that we support them. Um, everybody from the people that clean the street to protect us in the police department. We've got to pay them. If you give them just a little bit of a raise, they're not, it's not doing them any good. So 5%, I'm a whole, wholeheartedly 100% behind that. Okay. 
and I'm not saying that. I'm just trying to prepare you with information tonight because I can see that this has kind of been run, going to be run through. If we, if we don't take some time to look at this and discuss it, we're doing a disservice to the taxpayers, to the department heads, to the employees. So I really think that I'd like to hear, you know, some some conversations tonight from the council. Any other thoughts? I kind of noticed that um, there's been a lot of line items that are lower on the 2021 budget than from the 2020. Uh, so I, I think 5% is, is very fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that a pretty much a consensus? Yes. Okay. Because I know a lot of the line items in the departments are going to depend on that. So I thought we might want to clear the air on that um, before we move too much further into this. Okay. Go ahead, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Um, in, in some of the reason that, say, like FICA Med or Civil Perp or Police Perp didn't increase uh, in other years where we saw raises, was that it may have been a little high coming in anyway, um, or it could have been that we weren't fully staffed uh, for one year um, and didn't need to spend all the money. Uh, to be on the safe side, I put in you know 5% for the perfs, the FICA med. We may not use all of it, but if we don't use all of it, that money will revert back into the general fund, will be available for spending down appropriations and doing additional appropriations. Um, moving on, so the perfs, up five percent uh, longevity uh, that's based off of the number of years that employees have had here based off of uh, the number of years that our employees have we need to increase that up to seven thousand fifty dollars area plan and board of works i increased uh, by five percent each and then training at seminars um, now i know it's been a weird year because of coronavirus um, we haven't spent anything out of that um, at least halfway through this year and not spend any in 2019 I think we could reduce it down to 1500 um, That should be adequate based off of our expenditures in the past. Um, I guess in terms of uh, personal services for this department, any questions, thoughts? All right. Hearing none, um, we've got miscellaneous office supplies. I know we hadn't spent um, you know, close to half, halfway through the year. Um, but I left that the same at $3,000 based off of uh, previous expenditures. Same with the equipment repair. I uh, kept that at $1,500. If attorney, we reduce those, can, can we talk about this? My goal yeah. tonight is to, to hopefully reduce the tax levy on the citizens. I, I mean, I'm in agreement that the department has the employees deserve a rate. We've talked about that. But I think they'll need to look at some areas where we can cut in order to reduce the tax levy on the citizens. And just in those two things that you're looking at, you know, a budget of 3000 or 500 was spent last year, a budget of 1500 well, so far this year, or 74 And just by re reducing those, or even a 1000 or $500, when we start carrying some of that down, that's going to show a benefit to the taxpayers. I think we can't just brush through this and dismiss those things. I, I, we really need to look at the money that's being used, not just what's been appropriated in the past. I mean, if we're just going to sit here and you're going to read through this and we're not going to discuss it, because this is the time for the council to have the discussion and make some decisions. I don't think we're doing as 
a great service to the taxpayers if we just sit here and listen to you breathe through this. And if that's all we're going to do tonight, then we might as well be done, done now. This is our elected duty to take the time to go through this and to do what we can to help everyone involved. We will, of course. Are, are, are we interested in doing anything for the Northern President and I? Are we going to sit here and just let him read it to us and then agree to every little thing that's on the paper? Well, number one, you're not agreeing to everything tonight. You have the opportunity we, to hold it. We can discuss it as we go through it, Mr. Mayor. Not have you read the whole thing and then go back and have a discussion on that. We Can we let the mayor finish what he was going to say, please? Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a long meeting if we continue to talk over each other. That's the purpose of this meeting... Okay. I you said this is going to be a long meeting. Let him read through the whole thing. Yeah. What I was trying to say is this is going to be a long meeting if we can't keep interrupting each other. I will stop at each green point and ask about the line items above it. Um, now, as it pertains to the tax levy, you could adopt this budget right now, but you can reduce the tax levy, which is at $1.258 million, somewhere around there. Um, however, you need to be careful because the, the county is on a levy freeze, meaning if you were to reduce the levy this year, you would keep it on that frozen level for the years to come, um, meaning that, let's say we reduce it from 1.258, I believe that's where it's at, down to $600,000, that the city would be stuck at that $600,000 um, until the county gets off the levy freeze. So this total budget does not, the budget itself has no impact on the tax rate. That tax levy does. Um, that tax levy is the property taxes and we're capped um, I believe it's 1.258, but I can confirm that. Um, actually, give me just a second. Where's the attorney tonight? Uh, McKenzie had prior plans um, prior to us scheduling the meeting. But luckily, we have until November. If you have any questions, um, there's plenty of time before then. Then what are we doing tonight? Sitting here and listening to you read it? We're having discussion of the budget. Primarily, right. we're discussing where line items should be increased so that you could save that power um, because after it is submitted on gateway, they can't be increased. However, we can discuss reductions as well. Why, right, thank you. Um, moving down to the services and charges budget of this department, uh, I reduced attorney down to 15,000. Um, we haven't, that's about what we can expect to use on an annual basis. We did have a pretty big year back in 2016 um, where we had a lawsuit uh, regarding the office tavern and the sidewalk. However, since then, um, we should be comfortable at $15,000. Engineering consulting, I reduced this line item. Um, however, I put some uh, I put some more money in the street department engineering line item. I do have uh, consulting within the edit fund. Uh, attorney for the council, uh, should be fine to stay at $5,000 based on previous usage. Mileage, we've got reduction of 500. Um, telephone, reduction of 1,500 based off prior usage. Computers, reduction of 2,500 based on prior usage. Advertising, although we haven't used it in previous years, well, this year, last year, halfway through this year, last year, um, we have used it in the past. President Brett Tim Connor, can you mute your microphone while you're not talking? We're getting some feedback on some computers. Thank you. 
Um, property and vehicle insurance, this is kind of a red herring. We do get um, reimbursed by water and wastewater for this bottom. So although it shows that we're over, um, we do get reimbursed by them. Um, that 55,000 should be sufficient for next year. Utilities and street lights, we bumped it up uh, based off for 2020, based off of Duke's anticipated rate hike that was um, rejected by the Indiana Utility Regulatory Commission. Uh, so we should be sufficient at 60,000. Um, hydrant riddle, that's set by ordinance based on the number of hydrants that we have and the cost per hydrant. Uh, based on the calculation of the number of hydrants, 172,000 should be sufficient. Maintenance miscellaneous, 4,000 is about where we've ended up. Animal control, uh, reduced it by $500, put us at 1,000. Just a reminder, we'll talk about all these line items once we get through this section of services and charges. Flood control, um, kept it the same at 25,000, which is where it's been since at least 2017. Dues and institutes, kept it the same at 2,000. That's about where we ended last year. Code enforcement, I reduced it to zero um, and put that in edit. And the cemetery, cemetery contract, we stay right around 3,500. Um, so let's open it up for discussion of these line, on, line items within services and charges, budget. I know Spencer, you had something about advertising. Yes, uh, since we haven't used the advertising, um, what primarily is the advertising used for? Is it just uh, notifications going sent out through the, the city or what are we using the advertising for? Primarily through the Carroll County Comet or legal advertising. Okay, since we haven't used it, used any in the last couple of years, um, you know, why don't we half it? Because, um, I mean, there needs to be some money in there just in case we have to have to use it. But since we haven't been using it the last few years, why don't we just half it for now? That saves, you know, a couple hundred bucks. And then, mm -hmm. and then my next one was down to animal control. Um, what did we spend that 246 on on animal control for this year so far? Um, I, I don't have this year pulled up. Okay. Um, what about, I mean, last year, if you got last year's pulled up too, I want to see what um, we're paying animal control for since the, since we're paying. So that's high in Coghill, um, we'll catch cats and, well, primarily cats, um, and then get them spayed or neutered. And that's uh, the cost that, that's primarily what we're paying out of that animal control fund, line item. Why, why are we taking care of that? The county's got animal control. Uh, the county doesn't deal with cats. Yeah. So this, she traps them in place, she gets them spayed or neutered, and re puts them back where she found them um, to help control the cat population. Okay. Right. Anything else from the rest of the council regarding the service and services and charges of this department? None at this time. And my that we could control. I kind of Gail, you're I can, having I a hard time. You're cutting in and out. Could you repeat that? I said I agree that we could probably re reduce animal control another 500 down to 500. I think that'd be feasible if we're only spending. I think we can reduce. Yep. I think we can reduce line item one zero one zero zero twelve ten from three thousand down to two thousand based on prior use. I'm sorry. Can you say that number of that line item again? I think we. Can yeah, it's the first line item miscellaneous office supplies. But we're back up there. Okay. Yeah, that's the very first one. <clears throat> From prior years, it looks like we could easily reduce that down to 2000. Equipment repair. 
that looks like we could reduce that easily down to 500 based on prior usage. If we reduce these, where are we going to get the money if we do have equipment repair and it's going to cost $2,000? We just pull it from another account? Because if you haven't spent money for a few years, your equipment's going Take to from the general. have an issue. That's why we have a QM cap improvement um, fund that money can be going into for things like repair, software, large purchases. Money needs to be put in, into a fund like that so that as things come along replacing vehicles, replacing equipment, the money is there for these types of expenditures. I have a question. So we go through and we tighten this budget quite a bit. What happens in the few years down the road when we need to up this and we have got ourselves, uh, like Shane said, in that um, freeze and and it's not we're not able to to do that. I I, I see. I don't think we're going to use all of this money in every line item, but I do see, see maybe the need for a cushion. We have an $8 million cushion right now. In the general fund? No. Huh. In our cash reserve. Um, well, it, we're kind of there's two different questions here one is the actual tax levy itself um, which isn't necessarily dependent on this budget um, this budget as long as we have money in reserves um, we could have a budget that's larger than what we're expected to bring in we could reduce our tax levy or yeah our tax levy uh, however if we reduce the tax levy, that's when we run into issues um, for future years. So just making these reductions in line items or suggesting these reductions in line items on its own doesn't have an impact on what we can do in future years. It requires um, also reducing that levy. That explain your question, Sandy? Yeah. Thank you. Do we have anything else from the council regarding uh, the services and charges of this department? What about the computers? I know that several new computers were just purchased, just like six new computers were purchased for the city building, uh, I, I believe some of the police. So is there going to be a need next year for $12,500 in computers? Is that in somebody's plan? Because right now that's in our budget, the Common Council budget. So what specifically is that being budgeted for? That's for really any general fund um, department computers. Um, the largest expenses we have coming out of there in previous years was for the servers. For City Hall, 